She just wants some ice cream. Well, Thomas Schoberg is our ice cream man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank All you. right, we're back on Dishing It Out with David, Nikki, Nellis. We got Thomas Schoberg, who is the uh, executive chef out at Rosa Mexicano in National Harbor. Before we get back to Thomas, I just want to thank our sponsors, the people that make the show happen, uh, the folks at Georgetown Bagelry, uh, Neighborhood Restaurant Group, and Michael Babin, Rustico, Evening Star, Tallulah, Vermilion, Buzz Bakery, Birch and Barley, and Church Key. Mm -hmm. Love it there. Yeah. Columbia Firehouse, and the people at Founding Farmers and Farmers and Fishers. Thank you all, and you're all great places to eat. We love coming in. So now we're back with Thomas Schoberg. So Thomas, you have um, two really unique ice creams here that we've been digging into and that are melting on our plates. <laughs> but tell us about the corn one. Sure, the, the one that you just tasted, that's our, yes. our corn and palomitas ice cream. Mm -hmm. And we make uh, an ice cream base sweetened only with the natural sugars in the corn. Mm -hmm. Ripe summer corn, it's perfect, it's seasonal right now. And uh, we spin some caramel into that and some homemade caramel popcorn that we make at the restaurant. Oh, so, so it's a lot of fun to make. Corn on corn, it's a, actually. Yeah, it's corn two ways in ice cream. Uh huh. It's very yummy. And tell me about. I'm, I'm not going to try pronouncing it because I butcher things. Like kahita. Yeah. Kahita is something we actually feature in the restaurant in a lot of different desserts and some of our other items too. But it's a goat's milk caramel. If mm -hmm. you go down to Mexico, all the caramels is uh, goat's milk caramel. It's a lot more rich, a little bit more dense. So, all right. So explain what goat's milk. Caramel is. I mean, it's just instead of using cream, they use goat's exactly. milk. Exactly. That's it. That, that, that's basically it. Okay. They, uh, they they cook the sugar the same way, and then they they uh, add the goat's milk where you would normally add heavy cream to make caramel here. And it really does add a just a rich, a rich, rich character to the caramel. Is it a looser caramel? I mean, no, is it just actually, the it, it's uh, it's just, it looks the exact same. It's a little bit darker, mm -hmm. but uh, just the simplest way to describe it, it's just very rich. Okay. I just Great. want to know about the first person in history who had the guts to milk a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the that's, that's right. for another show. <laughs> that's right. They took one look at a German shepherd and said, let's try the goat. <laughs> <laughs> let's try the goat. All right. Well, Thomas, thanks for joining us. Uh, well, first of all, let's tell everybody where your restaurant yeah, is, sure. please. Well, we have two D.C. locations. I actually work way out in Maryland at National Harbor, so mm -hmm. if you uh, like to get out of the city, at least feel like you're out of the city, it's a great place to come right by the water. We love it out there. But it's beautiful. But we have our, our Penn Quarter store, which has been there for four years, right across from the Verizon Center. Great. Well, thank you for bringing in all these delicious treats today and for joining for us this morning. I appreciate morning. it. It was fun to get out of the restaurant. I bet. <laughs> I'll stick around then. Okay. Uh, let's get back to the guys from Vint Hill. Um, let's talk about cost for doing all this. Is it any different for an individual to come out and do this than for, say, a restaurant or a chain that wants, you know, 20 barrels and, and 10,000 bottles of wine? I'm just... Hey, everything's negotiable. Um, <laughs> hey, let's talk. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you took the uh, words right out of my mouth. Yeah, basically, to do a barrel of wine is 25 cases of wine. Mm -hmm. It's okay. about 300 bottles, and it's about $6,000. And a lot of that's the educational venue, the time involved, invested working with the winemakers, and, and for us, the ability to teach you answers to questions that you don't even know questions that exist right now. Whether to cold soak, what type of use to you, what type of barrel regime, when to do oxygen splash rock returns. Uh, a so lot I was of just going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> just the tip of my tongue. Well, as you would go into a restaurant too, learn how to cook food, where you're going to learn how a lot of differences and nuances of cooking food properly, and the history as well. So we teach you about the history of winemaking of that varietal, and want to have you walk away with a very complete uh, educational venue and appreciation of wine that isn't just Friday night conversation, talk with your friends, but something you can really appreciate. So this so is thousand dollars. This is something that maybe four Wait, or five you, friends you, might go in on together. Or? Exactly. A couple will do it, or two or three couples get together. Restaurants do it. We have several restaurants and a few retail stores involved. We have a couple winemakers that are becoming winemakers and opening their own wineries so that they cut their teeth for a year or two working with us. This is a great opportunity to you know do the traditional artisan type of uh, uh, apprenticeship type program. Well, so DJ, tell us about the wines you poured here. Uh, okay, we're, we're full on into red now, mm -hmm. and the one on your left would be Cabernet Franc, and the one on your right would be Tanat, uh, both 100% varietal. Um, as yeah, Tanat is not a grape that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, so what are you looking for when you drink a wine like this? Tanat is a, it's a, it's a big, it's a very bold wine. This is a 2007 Tanat. It's really starting to kind of come into its own. Um, traditionally, Tanat is, is, is very, very tannic, very heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times used for blending, but it makes a really nice single varietal. This would be something that, you know, you really kind of want to hold on to for a little bit before you drink it. It might be a little aggressive if you... 
like if this was a 2009 Tanat and you were drinking it right now, it might be a little, a little heavy, a little bitey on the, on the palate. But it, it's a great wine. It goes really nice with like your, your big meats, mm -hmm. heavy pastas type dishes. And how long does a wine like that hold for? Um, you know, I mean, kind of broad stroke stereotype in Virginia, we would definitely say at least five years. Okay. I would guarantee you that this wine uh, will probably still be drinking really nice in ten years. Mm -hmm. But as a, a simple... I'm writing like, that down. You're guaranteeing it. A five. For five. Okay. I'm guaranteeing you for five. <laughs> uh, but I think you'll still be drinking really nice in ten years. Okay, great. Now, we don't have a lot of time left, but you guys brought something today that I thought was really interesting, so I want to bring it up. Now, I know it's in the port style, but you're calling it... What are you calling it? We're calling it Snort. Snort. I'm sorry. I feel <laughs> weird saying that. Um, it so, is early. So tell us a little bit, because I've never seen a Virginia port before. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, ports basically a fortified wine during the red wine fer fermentation process where brandy is added to uh, stop the fermentation let the natural sugars of the wine um, uh, retain itself and the alcohol or brandy added extracts a lot of tannins and colors. It's a big, heavy, rich wine. It's not as sweet as traditional ports made in Portugal. Um, but it's a lovely after-dinner dessert wine, uh, and it does have some giddy-up, and it's come along. It's about 18% alcohol, and something that has really been fun to, to make. I've studied port making in Portugal, it's a lovely Is that wine. why port's called port? Because of Portugal? Exactly. Yes. From Porto. Hell, I didn't know. We had the guy on the show. Well, that was a year and a half ago. I, I can't well, even remember your name. This is very good. It's so raisiny. Mm, it is lovely big wine. But what we learned about Virginia is trying to really create regional identity. And in the production methodology, both growing grapes and making wine, if we can come together to make the best wine for the quality value relationship, we're not trying to be the cheapest, we're not trying to be the most expensive on the, mar on the, on the market, but to have Virginia wines really come together to have regional identity. So you taste a good Virginia wine, it can be, you know, ports are kind of individualistic stylistically, but the Viognier's and Cabernet Francs of Virginia are really coming along well. So right. we're going to have to, to, to pull it closer because we're running out of time. Tell everybody very quickly where Vent Hill is in, the real, in the real world and online. Uh, online we're at um, VentHillCraftWinery.com. Mm -hmm. And it is, all three wineries are really just about an hour west of, of D.C. Really easy to take 66 in traffic. Well, okay, but <laughs> you say all three wineries. Uh, I'm sorry. Names, uh, please. Vent Hill Craft Winery, Pyramid mm -hmm. Cellars, and the winery at LaGrange. Um, about, thir about 30 miles westbound. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you guys coming in today. This has yeah. been fantastic. Um, okay, well, as we do on every show, we like to um, feature a charity or two because we know that we're very fortunate to sit in here and drink wine and eat lots of good food, but not everybody does. Well, in this case, we're talking about animals that don't get to do this. <laughs> we, we well, wanna, animals deserve well, a chance, yeah, too. Animals are nice, too. All right, well, anyways, the very pet-friendly Park High in Washington hosts a series of Paws in the Park Happy Hours, and it benefits the Washington Animal Rescue League, and every now and then we like our four-footed friends to get a little help. Uh, from 6 to 8, you can bring your, your pet to mingle on the hotel's grounds, and they're also going to have uh, adoptable dogs from the league shelter there for people to, to check out and maybe find a new home. Cost of the event is only $12. That gets you two tickets for beer and wine plus uh, complimentary dog treats. And uh, a portion of the evening's proceeds are donated to the league. So the next one is August the 4th. So mark your calendar. At Park Hyatt, call 202-789-1234. And if you can't remember that number, you don't deserve to go. No. If you look at the list, are you on it, .com, we have the event listed there, and you can certainly That's find true. all and, the info. And you can also follow Nikki on Twitter and on WTOP. She'll tell you about it there, too. Absolutely. Okay, and as we do on every show, we like to leave you with a little quote. All right, we have two quotes. One we from do. Chris Perriman. Oh, that's says, right. He kicked it off. These are wine show. quotes. You can't drink wine all day if you don't start in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the one I, the, another one I like is wine improves with, the, with age. The older I get, the better I like it. Not but bad. I'm bummed. And that was by, thank that you, was by the famous author A. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to thank our guests. We do want to thank our guests, but we also want to tell you who's going to be on our next show. Next week we have Regan Daly. She is author of The Sweet Kitchen. She's going to be talking to us about her latest book. And also, I don't know who else that is. Pizza with Pachis. Oh, the new pizzeria Pachis. Uh, the owner is going to come in with lots of yummy pizzas, including their fabulous chocolate pizza. Okay, so, so we've got to wrap it up. Uh, Wes Marshall, Billy Klein, Chris Perman, DJ Lafine, and Thomas Schoberg, thank you all for coming in. Thank you thank so you much. Guys. It's a lively show today. We'll see you all next fun. week. Think globally, drink locally. There we go. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was great.
It's like a free for all wrestling. You know, it's like it's like an ultimate fight. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, you so yeah. much. Yeah. That was awesome. Everything was great. She so, signed. do you have to go back to Zoo Bunch now, or do you have the day off? Hi, babe. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's okay. Cool. okay. I know you want some ice cream. Thank you for spending your day with us. She came right in with the ice cream. <laughs> huh? Um, How cute she was writing notes because she wanted ice cream. She was like, oh, is right. it commercial? C-O-M-M-E-R-S-H-A-L. Right? Sick studio kid. He's going to open the